Welcome, people of YouTube, to my newest playthrough. I'm Tuzi Porygon, and like I mentioned in the end of my Call of Duty Ghost playthrough, I am now recording Charlie and the Chocolate Factory on PlayStation 2. It's a game based on the 2005 movie of the same name. And I seen the movie as a kid, but I never did play this game back then. And I say that, well, usually movie-based games aren't as good as every other game since they're usually rushed out so they can come out at the same time as the movie, although there are a bunch of movie-based games that are pretty good. And I wouldn't really say that this game is as good as games like Spider-Man 2 or anything like that, but I don't really think it's a bad game, although it does have quite some bugs and glitches. But none of them are game-breaking or anything like that. Okay, saving, just hurry up already. We all want to see the game itself. You realize that. Opening cutscene time. This is the story of an ordinary little boy named Charlie Bucket. He was not faster or stronger or more clever than other children. And though his family was terribly poor, Charlie was the luckiest boy in the world. <laughs> he just didn't know it yet. Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. No one's been in or out for years. Not since he closed it up and sent us all home. I know, Grandpa Joe. I wish we could see inside. And the world wished along with him. Then one day came an unexpected proclamation. Dear people of the world, I, Willy Wonka, have decided to allow five children to visit my factory. Five golden tickets have been hidden beneath the wrappers of five ordinary Wonka bars. Each of the finders will be shown around the factory personally by me. In addition, one of these children will receive a special prize beyond anything you could ever imagine. Beyond anything you could ever imagine. But I haven't any money for chocolate. Nothing's impossible, Charlie. Nothing. The first golden ticket was found by a gluttonous boy named Augustus Gloop. I'm eating the Wonka bar, but I taste the ticket. The second by a spoiled little girl named Baruka Sword. Daddy, I want a golden ticket now! The third was found by Violet Beauregard, an arrogant gum-chewing champion. The winner of that special prize is gonna be me. And the fourth golden ticket was found by an ill-mannered genius named Mike TV. I calculated just where to look. An idiot can do it. Charlie's dream of exploring the Wonka factory was fast slipping away. When fate intervened. Ten dollars! Nothing's impossible, Charlie. You said it, Joe. So as you may have guessed, what you're doing in level one of the game is chasing after that dollar. That way Charlie can buy a candy bar, you know, a Wonka bar, so he can get the fifth and final golden ticket. Well, good thing the loading wasn't as long as I thought. Let's chase after that good old ten dollar bill. And that's totally something that Mr. Krabs from Spongebob Squarepants would do. Every fan of the show knows how obsessed with money he is. So if he was in Charlie's place, he would most definitely chase after that dollar. Hey, where are you going, beautiful? Stop teasing! I just want to buy a Wonka bar with you! Okay, when it gets to this point, the dollar's gonna get stuck on that fence, but all you have to do is touch it to get it unstuck. Come back here, dollar. I'm gonna spend you, whether you like it or not. Oh boy. I totally jumped on top of that truck, or on the front of the truck, without even needing one of these boxes. Okay, I do believe you need to use one of the boxes to get over that. Come on, pick it up. And my god, that box looks pretty heavy, and somehow, Charlie has the strength to carry it. Despite that, you know, he's a 
pretty skinny and lanky boy. Oh, come on, get over there. You can pick up this box too, but you don't even need it for anything around here. Or, wait. Oh, yeah, that's that's right, you don't need that box. You can just simply jump up here. Oh wait, the dollar is stuck again. Come here, dollar. I want you. Oh no! No! Don't worry, Charlie. You haven't lost it yet. Oh, come on. I got up there the first time. There we go. Where'd you go? Come here, dollar. You will be mine. Boy, Charlie's best hope he doesn't get in trouble for hopping along rooftops like this. Almost! Got it! Oh no! Ah! Holy crap, he's gonna fall off there. Well, he is gonna fall off, but... Good thing he's not gonna get hurt. Come on, loading or saving, just hurry up again. For crying out loud, this game. And now there's a loading screen. You just gotta hate those, especially the ones that take forever. Oh boy, Charlie's now going sledding using a garbage can lid. Better watch out for the snowmen and the other garbage cans. I'm gonna get you, Dollar. I'm totally gonna get you and buy my Wonka bar. And better watch out for the Wonka bar trucks. Are you enjoying the ride, Charlie? I hope you don't get too sick from this. Oh, and wouldn't you say that this is a pretty appropriate game to play during the month of January, since the beginning of the game takes place at the end of January, while the rest of it takes place on the, I mean, the uh, February 1st. Yeah, that's what I remember from the movie. Charlie and the other kids go to Wonka's factory on February 1st. And strangely, in the 1971 film, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, they all go to the factory on October 1st instead. Okay, so that's it for the beginning mission of the game. Getting the dollar, it, it definitely wasn't much of a challenge. And I'm probably gonna stop part one after the next few cutscenes. I wanna say the beginning of Willy Wonka's factory for the next one. At that moment, Charlie felt rich, but more than that, he felt terribly hungry. Ten dollars was enough to feed his entire family for a week. So after careful consideration, Charlie decided to spend just one dollar of it on himself. One Wonka Whipple Scrumptious Fudge Banner Delight, please. Hungrily, Charlie pulled back the wrapper and took his first bite. Then pulling it back for another bite was one small corner of shiny paper. A golden ticket, the very last one in the entire world, and Charlie had found it. Greetings to you. to you, the lucky finder of this golden ticket from Mr. Willy Wonka. Charlie carried the ticket home to show his family as quick as his little legs could carry him. And the very next day, Charlie, Grandpa Joe, and the other four ticket holders gathered at the gates of the chocolate factory exactly as each ticket had instructed. And they all had big plans for when they got inside. 
I'm keeping my eyes on the prize. I will devour every one of the chocolates and candies and things of this nature. I'm going to look for things I want my daddy to get me. I'm going to be bored. You think Wonka's got any video games in there? Do you think Mr. Wonka will recognize you? Hard to say. It's been years since I've worked for him. And exactly at the appointed time, the factory gate, closed for so long, finally opened. And there stood Willy Wonka himself. Dear visitors, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to my humble factory. Now quickly, we mustn't dawdle. There's far too much to see. With little time and lots to see, the tour began. And they were whisked away to the very heart of the Wonka factory. The chocolate room. It's beautiful. What's more, it's all edible. And it was, for every single thing around them was made of candy, even down to the green grass on the banks of his chocolate river. I'm in heaven! I bet. I want a chocolate room. I want two. The last one to the riverbank's a rotten egg. Every drop of that river is hot melted chocolate of the finest quality. The waterfall is most important. No other factory in the world mixes its chocolate by waterfall. When Augustus Blue heard that, he was determined to drink his fill. Just one zip? No, two zips. But even that proved too little for Augustus. Please, boy, please. My chocolate must be untouched by human hands. Leaning out to guzzle the chocolate, the gluttonous boy lost his balance and fell right in. Ah! And in moments, he was drawn into an enormous chocolate pipe where he stuck fast. Help me! I'm It's not big enough. I'll say. Not much of a swimmer, was he? Someone should do something. We must continue. There's so much to see in too little time. But you can't leave him there. Eventually he'll come out. The pressure will get to him, you know. And yet... If Augustus were freed earlier, the river could be cleaned quicker, and production would continue sooner. And since the other children had not shown an interest in helping Augustus, Wonka left the task to Charlie. Be about your work, then, and rejoin the tour when you can. I'll be able to check back with you at a moment's notice, though, so don't be surprised to see me. Charlie agreed stay behind. But as for how to get Augustus Bloop unstuck from the pipe, Charlie was about to find he would have more help than expected. Boy, who would have thought Chapter 1, the real Chapter 1, would just be a cutscene? Kind of odd, wouldn't you say? But this is definitely where I'm going to end Part 1. I'll continue on with the actual gameplay in the Chocolate Factory in Part 2. I better Oompa Loompas skip are right the best. here. Okay, well, thank you for watching Part 1 of my Charlie and the Chocolate Factory playthrough, and I shall see you all later, where I now begin the first level of the Chocolate Room. Bye, everyone.